I know a lot of you are giving your L1 visa interview in the next two months. In this video, I'm going to talk about some important L1 visa questions, show you some real interview experiences, and more importantly, talk about some recent L1 visa trends. So keep on watching. Hi guys, my name is Shachi and I'm a travel and a visa coach. On this channel, you'll find lots of useful videos on the US visa process. We have a detailed, in-depth video about the entire L1 visa preparation that's right here. And it also includes a free PDF download which has the entire question bag. So make sure that you check out these videos. So today's video is based on my experience of working with our L1 clients. And in this video, we're going to go into a deep dive of the recent L1 interview experiences, kind of dissect them to understand what are the key points that you need to be prepared for and that will help you prepare for your interview. For L1 visas, I truly, truly believe that once you understand what exactly you need to highlight or showcase to the visa officer, the entire preparation process becomes really simple and that's the exact aim of today's video. So we're going to do this separately for L1A and then for L1B. So let's get started. So let's start with the L1A category. Now in L1A visa, the main thing which was highlighted and which was checked repeatedly was your managerial experience. And particularly, what are your roles? What are your responsibilities as a manager, especially when it comes to handling people? So some of the recent interview questions revolve around how many direct and indirect employees do you have? Or rather, how many direct and indirect reportees do you have? Uh, do you have a budget? If yes, what is the budget? Are you responsible for profit and loss? And a lot of questions about the team size in US. What is the current team size? What is the team size you are expecting to build up? And so on. So let's look at three recent L1 interview experience to understand these questions and the way they are asked a little better. And also, there are some special tips included, so let's go. So let's start with the L1A experience. So the first experience here starts with a very basic question. What's your company's name? How long have you been with the company? Then he specifically asked, do you handle profit and loss in the company? And if yes, how? So not only did the VO want to know whether you handle the profit and loss, but he was also very interested to understand how exactly you go about doing that. So this, I feel, was a clincher in this interview. This was a very key question, which came pretty much in the beginning of the interview. And I really feel that the way this question was handled set the tone for the rest of the interview. And then he is asked uh, about your US salary, which is a pretty common question to be asked. And are you going for a project or a product? So specifically asked to differentiate whether he was going for a specific project or a product. And if project, what's your budget? So again here, he, the VO is asking for specific details of the budget. He was looking at a particular figure or a number that the candidate could give him. And then the important question, how many direct and indirect reportees do you have? Uh, the rest of the questions are pretty standard about the US designation, about the role in US and about details of the US manager. And there's a special tip shared in the end uh, and the person says that they verified in my wife's passport that my name has been mentioned in the spouse section. So now we get a lot of questions from people who are applying for L1 and L2 together whether it is mandatory for the passport to have details of the spouse. Now. As long as you have a marriage certificate and, of course, this legal document, it is not mandatory for your passport to have your spouse's name mentioned. You can carry the marriage certificate with you. But yes, in some interviews like this one, they do check and verify the passport. But if you don't have the name mentioned, you can offer to show the marriage certificate to the visa officer and that's going to be fine as well. Let's move to the second L1 interview experience. This is a pretty short one, but there are some key questions which have been asked. So again, it starts with what does the company do? Now, there's one thing which I have observed over these years that in L1A visa interviews, what does the company do is pretty much the way a lot of interviews begin. So having a short crisp introduction about what does your company do, um, especially what part or division you work in is something that you know should be readily uh, should be prepared and be handy so yeah it starts with what does the company do and then it goes into what are some of your large clients now um, it's pretty rare in interviews to be asked about names of clients because these are internal proprietary you know information 
but there are interview experience like this especially in the last two months where we are seeing names budgets numbers you know specific details being asked and if you're asked that it is okay to disclose it to the visa officer next he's asked what is your role of course the most important question and how many people report to you moving to the third l1a interview experience this is a pretty uh, this is a pretty detailed interview experience where a lot of questions a lot of areas have been covered so it starts with okay so which is the company you're working for and the officer asks a very basic question so you're working with xyz company now i really want you to pay attention to the answer that has been given here so the candidate said that yes i've been working with xyz company for three years as a manager and i have expertise in xyz domain currently managing a team and uh, leading an engagement for the client so in US visa interviews, right? My recommendation is never to give one word or really short answers. Every question is an opportunity for you to highlight everything that's relevant. So in a question like this where he's asked, are you working with this company? You can include relevant details about how many years of experience you have, what is the exact domain that you handle as a manager within the company. Then he's asked more questions about his experience as a manager with the company. And then of course, the frequently asked question do you have any direct reports to which he has given the entire breakup of how many direct reports how many indirect reports and also what are his rules for his direct reportees and also he's asked question about the budget in the us and whether he has the budget to hire more people in the us and then coming further down he's also asked questions about his spouse why is your wife not here for the interview now Again, this is a point to note. So if you are married and you are not applying for the visa with your spouse, that is, if you're going for the interview alone, then you will surely be asked, why is your spouse not here with you today? And you need to have a reason for that prepared. Now, in this case, uh, in this client's case, the spouse was already in the US, uh, but it might be a different scenario for you. So if your spouse is not applying with you, for whatever the reasons, could be professional reasons, could be personal reasons, just have a short one or two line um, explanation prepared for that and the end of this interview again there's an important tip about attire so he says blazer I think it makes a difference at least for L1A and I completely agree and this is something which we advise all our clients that for L1A visas it is better to wear a blazer now I know that a lot of you are going to say that the weather is not uh, blazer like and it's too hot and all that I agree but you don't have to wear it the entire time just carry it with you and once you're done with all the formalities, once you're inside and you're just about to, you know, face the visa officer, you can put it on at that time. But for L1A, it does make a difference because there are so many people who are going to be interviewing that day. So it just helps to set you a little bit apart. So these were three interview experiences. All of these are people who have worked with us in the last two months and uh, they were able to share this experience with us. And I hope that all the questions that we have highlighted and shown you helps you in getting ready for your L1A process. In case you want a more in-depth preparation, you can work one-to-one -one with me. So just like these people, you can also take a one-to-one -one consultation session. Uh, the link for all the ways in which you can work with me is mentioned in the description box below. Next, moving on to L1B visas. So L1B visas are more in number. There are more visas that are issued, more interviews that are conducted. And this really helped us to get a much better understanding of what are the recent trends and the rejection reasons for L1B. Now in L1B, the main thing that is being highlighted, which is being checked by the visa officers is whether you are involved in any type of development work or not. So for L1B visas being involved in a development work that is working on a technology which is internal, which is proprietary to the company is very, very critical. In fact, most of the visas which were getting rejected under L1B were those where the direct technical expertise, the direct development work was not clear and it gave the impression that the person was just involved in some type of implementation or just providing some type of existing service. So when you are preparing for your L1B interview, in all your answers, highlight your technical expertise, what type of development work you have done. If you have worked on any internal or proprietary tools or technology or frameworks of your company, then make sure to bring that out very, very clearly into your answer. And now let's look at three 
recent L1B interview experience and these are interview experience of people who have worked one to one with us and I feel there is so much to learn and understand from these interview experience so let's start. So the first interview experience starts with a very basic question which visa category are you applying for L1A or L1B so many times BOs do get confused I feel as to which visa category is it and they like to clarify upfront whether it's L1A or L1B. Then he's asked a very important question, why are you going to the US? Now, again, in this interview, I feel this is sort of the clincher. Why are you going to the US? Why are you required in a US office? And here you very clearly need to show what is the requirement in the US office and how your expertise is going to fulfill that requirement. So I would highly recommend you to check out the previous video, uh, the, the video that I was talking about previously, because this is a detailed L1 interview experience video wherein you'll be able to understand how to frame answers for important questions like this. Coming back here, he's also asked why you? So in L1B interviews, there are typically three questions which are repeated. That is one is why are you going to the US or what will be your role in the US? Second is why you? And third is why can't this be done from India? So if you are appearing for an L1B interview, please make sure that you're prepared for these three questions. Now in this interview experience, the main thing to note is he is asked, what is the tool you're going to work? Explain more about it. So L1B interviews can get technical, right? So here he is asked to explain technical details of the tool uh, that he was going to work. So you are going to migrate with this tool. It is overseas tool. So you can see that there are a lot of follow-up questions as well, where the VO is trying to get a very clear picture of what kind of expertise you have and also what is the exact work, development work that you're going to do in the US. And then he is asked, who is your client and are you going to work from client location? Again, a common question in the recent L1B interviews about the location, whether you're going to work from the company location or whether you're planning to work from the client location. Let's move to the second L1B interview experience. So this is again a pretty detailed interview experience. And here there was also a case of a previous B1 rejection as well and the candidate has asked questions on that also. So let's dive into this. So here he is asked which is the company you're working for and the candidate says I'm working for Microsoft. So the VO comments that Microsoft is a very big organization, can you be more specific? So yeah, absolutely. So this is something which we tell all our clients that if you're going to be talking about where do you work, which company do you work, especially when the companies are big companies with diversified services like Microsoft, be very, very specific about which exact domain, which exact vertical, or even which exact project you are working on in the company. So he's asked to be more specific about his role in Microsoft and then he talks about working in Microsoft in Azure. And then basic questions about how many years he has worked, what's his designation, and then the important question, what do you do currently? So again in L1B interviews, what is your current role is a frequently asked question because this is a chance for them to understand what is your technical expertise and whether you are involved in any type of development work or not. So he is here answered, what do you do? He, so here you can see that very clearly the technical expertise is being highlighted, that my work involves developing features for Azure server and more technical details about the development experience and what exactly he works on and what platforms he works on. All of these details have been included in this answer. And then he is asked about his previous B1 rejection and what was the reason for rejection and of course some basic questions about his salary in the US. So the main takeaway from this interview and I feel that this interview is a very typical format for L1B interviews. So the main takeaway from this is to be really specific about your role in the company especially if you work for very big companies and of course have a good answer prepared for what exactly you do currently in which you can highlight your technical expertise and the development work that you do so moving to the third interview experience so this is a really short one but i still wanted to show you this to highlight uh, some things which can happen and so if you really look at the question it starts normally where he is asked about his tools what is the technology he works on what is his day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities of course the important questions then coming to the spouse uh, question there is a very I would say a surprise question when he's asked tell me three things about your relationship 
so if you are applying for the visa with your spouse you can expect these type of random surprise questions i would say people have been asked how many people attended your wedding they have been asked what type of cuisine did you serve at your wedding and they've also been asked questions like this uh, tell me three things about your relationship so yeah if you are going to the interview with your spouse be ready for these really candid questions so these are three l1b interview experience but let's look at just one more because again there is something which i want to highlight so again here this interview is a very standard l1b format where the vo is asking how long have you worked with the company he wants again more details about the company structure so he is asked what is the difference between the parent company as well as the affiliate then he is asked the designation in the us the company address again asked what does the company do now here the second half is where the the crux the important questions are so he is asked why does uh, what does my company do and why does your company want you to work in the us so very specific questions about what would be your role in the us so again do refer back to our detail l1 video experience so he, basically he is asked what does the company do and why does your company want you to work in the us so this is again a very important question where you need to clearly show what is the requirement in the us and how your technical expertise is going to fulfill that requirement and there is a follow up question what components have you developed from scratch so like i was telling you in the beginning of this section that the development work is something which is being checked which is being highlighted so here very specifically asked by the vo what components or what tools have you developed from scratch and of course the person was able to answer it and the visa was approved so yeah these are recent l1b interview experience and these are people who have worked with us so if you are also going to be facing your l1b exp interview soon and you would like to work one to one with me to prepare do check the link in the description box below we can do a consultation session to help you structure your answers we also have mock sessions which i feel is extremely beneficial because when it comes to us visa interviews it's all about practice it's all about being confident about being fluent and that comes with mocks so do check out details of all of these in the description box below and of course don't forget to get your free pdf which is the entire question bank that we have put together for l1 visa questions thank you so much for watching and i really hope that you found these interview experience as well as the insights and the tips shared really helpful and if you have any more questions feel free to leave them in the comment section below you could also dm me on instagram my instagram handle is achachi.mal signing off for now see you in the next one and we in fact have more content planned for the l1 visa so make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned and yeah i'll see you soon bye